folks welcome to the prepared homestead this is travis thank you all for stopping by to watch you know there's another sign that possible sign that we are watching our whole system kind of destabilize i know i'm on a i'm on a theme here first one today was kind of talking about this anyways while i can't confirm um i have been hearing and some of it you can confirm because you can see the things that they're doing publicly. But I'm talking about gov state governments. There are several states out there that are doing things publicly and openly and from what I hear behind closed doors to kind of uh, get themselves as a state ready for possible collapse, for possible separating themselves from the union. I know that sounds crazy, doesn't it? And I am the last person to advocate go for government in any form or fashion. Um, I, I'm not saying that I'm a complete anarchist in any way, but the current system that we have is just so corrupt, even on the state and local levels. Uh, while there's certainly some good people still left that are trying to do really good things, and occasionally something good actually happens, uh, unfortunately, the way the system has become, not how it was set up, but how it's become, is just complete corruption. Uh, but the point that I'm getting to is, is that there are some little bits of hope, it seems, in certain parts of the country. Uh, we've seen states uh, declare that their National Guard is a state guard. I mean, even just that term, state guard, that goes all the way back to the Civil War war between the states, the war of northern aggression, where uh, a lot of these southern states called themselves the state guard. Um, and we're seeing that happen. We're seeing states, uh, much like mine here in Missouri, uh, push for gold and silver as legal tender. Not just, you know, because it already is, according to the Constitution, but they're uh, solidifying that in the state constitutions that the state itself can coin and mint money. Uh, we're seeing that happen. Uh, we're seeing states uh, do things that are uh, opposing the federal government, that where they're, they're saying things like, you know, your gun laws don't apply here, or you, this regulation or that does not apply in our state. And while a lot of these these laws and, and stuff that's happened haven't been really challenged in court. Um, it, it is setting a precedence that some of these states are, are preparing themselves. I can't name names, but um, I've been told on pretty good authority that here in Missouri and a few other states that there are certain uh, state level representatives that meet privately and that they try to figure out what kind of laws and things that they need to be doing within the state to prepare that state uh, for the day when either the federal government collapses or they have to separate themselves from the state. And I'm not going to get into this argument that, well, the, you know, the Civil War decided that a state can't secede and stuff. Well, that, no, it didn't. It did not. Um, and if, if the, if the federal government in any way says that a state cannot uh, secede, then it's more corrupt than, than we thought. The point is, is that it's not just the uh, conspiracy theorists and us crazy hillbilly prepper channels that are talking about uh, the, the reality of a collapse and possibly internal conflict. Uh, we're seeing that happen really play out before our eyes with state governments. Not all, certainly not all, uh, but there are a few out there. And we're seeing it talked about in more mainstream circles. Is this absolutely proof and indicative of, a, of an actual collapse that's, that's getting ready to happen? I can't say that it, that's necessarily the case, but it's certainly something that should raise our eyebrows because um, I'm almost 45 years old, and I don't remember the last time I heard a lot of state governments 
passing legislation and talking about it publicly and internally of what they need to be doing to prepare themselves for when the federal or national government collapses. If governments, state and local, are doing things to kind of prepare, even if some, not all, are doing things to prepare for uh, all of the stuff that's going on in the uh, a pending collapse, whether it's economical, political, whatever, then probably we should be doing the same thing. And I know that most of you are. I, I still am concerned that so many people, it's, it's hard to describe that on one hand, they're completely believing, or at least they say, they give lip service, to believing that, yeah, this is all happening. This, you know, it, it's all coming down. You know, we're gonna, World War III is right around the corner, you know, collapse, all this kind of stuff. And then in the next breath, they're talking and planning and doing things as if none of this is happening. And I'm not saying that people should live their lives right now with this obsession with what's going on and, and do nothing else but preparing for this. But I do think it should be a, a pretty high priority in your life. And most of the planning that you're making, whether short term or long term, should kind of in a way revolve around this and should include these topics in those planning. So, you know, if you're saying, well, you know, the world's ending and blah, 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 but six months down the road, we're taking a trip to such and such country or cruise. I'm not saying don't do it, but have you thought about that? You know, have you thought about your plans to, you know, retire in five years and then buy your little homestead? Is that even feasible in five years? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, and so what are your plans, uh, at the very least, contingency plans, much like we're seeing some, not all, but some local and state governments do. What contingency plans do you have? Maybe you're not, you know, living the homestead, off-grid, self-sufficient lifestyle, but your goal is to do that. Uh, or, or maybe, you know, you still kind of have one foot still into the, the normal world, but you're trying to prepare. What is your plans for when all that stuff doesn't work out? You know, what, what's your plans for six months down the road, you know, a year down the road when you're planning a big vacation and the world's collapsed by then? Um, if, if, if all of your plans or at least you have, you know, a plan that, that everything is going to be normal and we're just going to keep living life as normal and there aren't contingency plans within that. Contingency plans of how do we set ourselves up now? How do we deal with our own personal debt of where we live, the type of vehicles that we have, our personal health, our preparations? Uh, you know, all of these things. Are you, are you examining all these aspects of your life and trying to figure out the best way to set them up so that if things are normal, you can still exist as that, but if things start going crazy and downhill real fast, your contingency plans just kind of transition in and take over. Uh, this is the kind of planning that we need to be doing, and I, I know I can't get you know, I'm not being very specific in this because it's difficult for everyone. I, I can't tell you specifically what you need to be doing because that may only, you know, be for just a small percentage. Everyone's situation is different. Uh, the point is, is that when you are making your plans for a life right now, I would strongly encourage you to incorporate into those plans all of these what ifs. What if things do start to really collapse in six months, in a year, what if we truly only have two years left, five years left, six months left, three months left? Uh, play out these what ifs. That's what these elites do when we hear these these war game scenarios or these round table discussions with the, you know, John Hopkins and the Who, the, the, not the not the band, uh, the you know, Bill Gates Foundation, all these people, and they have these discussions of what if this kind of virus was released? They do this kind of stuff all the time. That's how they're prepared and how they're kind of controlling things. We should be doing the same thing. 
having these round table discussions in our homes, whether they're with ourselves or family and, and tribe and, and, and crew and saying, okay, what if in three months everything does collapse? If, if the dollar completely bottoms out and it's no more, what if, you know, and by the end of March, we're, you know, propelled into a World War III global scenario? What if we end up in a, a some type of guerrilla level civil war where the country is really pulling apart? What if? And, and try to work in your plans for the future, all of your plans for the future, based on those you know, scenarios that you've worked out. This is something that a lot of people really need to do, and I'm afraid that too few people are actually doing it. I know many of you are, but I think a lot of people aren't, and I say that based on the responses that I get and the emails that I get, um, that I don't know that people really are setting down and, and thinking long and hard about these kinds of topics. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order, to prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.